watching the NCAA Women's Gymnastics on ESPN. It is senior day in Raleigh for the final home meet for this NC State Wolfpack team as they take on the Nittany Lions from Penn State, the University of Pennsylvania Quakers, and the pioneers of Texas women's. I'm Rachel Garland alongside Sydney Sneed. And Sydney, this is going to be a lot of gymnastics, four teams, four events, action at all times. But let's break down these teams into what we can expect today. Yeah, well, Rachel, as much as they're going to be competing against each other tonight, they're also going to be competing against themselves. We're nearing postseason here. It's down to the wire. So their minds are going to be focused on that NQS score. Absolutely. And we've got some fantastic gymnastics coming up. Here's a look at all of the meetings in or all the teams in today's competition NC State and Penn State number 21 and number 23 respectively in the national rankings so we've got some big gymnastics out of them and the unique thing is all four of these teams are coming off of three meets in nine days Penn State and Texas women just competed both on Friday night and then NC State and the University of Pennsylvania saw each other on Thursday at Temple and within all of those teams, we've got some rock star gymnasts. NC State sweeping the ACC accolades. What can you tell us? Yeah, Emily Shepard, ACC Gymnast of the Week. We can't even be surprised at this point. It's her sixth one in a row. Katia Edwards with her incredible floor performance last week, our specialist of the week. And then Katie Harper, ACC Newcomer of the Week. So exciting and impressive to have them absolutely sweep those this week. Now taking another look at the other teams tonight, we have Kalia McElliott from Penn State, only a freshman, but earned a career best of a 39.375 in the all around on Friday. Then looking at Penn, we have Skylar Carico, who's ranked number one in the all around in the GEC conference as well. And then for TWU, we have Daisy Woodring, who just led her team with a 985 floor and 9825 vault score in competition this past Friday. So it's going to be a head-to-head -head competition. Absolutely. So coming up, NC State will get started on the vault, but we've got live action on all four events at all times. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back inside Reynolds Coliseum here in Raleigh, North Carolina. We've got a fantastic quad meet as we get started for rotation number one. NC State's going to get started on the vault, but here is the format. Four teams are going to compete on all four apparatuses at the same time. They're going to continue to rotate in Olympic order, so vault bars, beam floor, and the home team gets the advantage of starting on vault and ending on floor. As always, six gymnasts per team. The top five scores count. The lowest score can be dropped from each team's event and team total. So rotation order, NC State will be on vault. The University of Pennsylvania is going to get started on the uneven bars. Penn State is going to start on beam and Texas women's will be on the floor. So Sydney, we always get that question on, is it, is it better to start on beam or end on beam? And Penn State's got, they get the lucky spot of starting. Right, I think I would rather start on beam. Also, it boosts your confidence when, you know, in postseason, you never know what event you're gonna start on. So I think starting on, I'd say the hardest event and getting it kind of out of the way just allows you to kind of let loose and, and have a good rest of the meet. Absolutely, and we've seen a lot of quad meets as of lately as teams start to get ready for postseason where postseason is not a dual meet anymore. There are multiple teams, sometimes multiple sessions. One thing too we talk to all these coaches about are that some people forget the gymnastics and the physical part is one thing, but there's a mental aspect that plays a role in postseason with being on podium or all teams going at once or the cameras in your face. You know, that can make a difference and you've got to, you know, train like that and really be prepared for that. Yeah, I think one of the other big differences too is the corrals at postseason where your teammates right. can't be right next to you. Um, so that's always an interesting one. And you might start to see in some of these later season meets that the teams kind of huddle together so that they can mimic or replicate that corral aspect. So the judges are getting ready to take control of their events. NC State again going to get started on the vault with Maddie Hall in the leadoff spot.
Maddie's been in this leadoff spot for quite some time now. Last week, actually the last couple of meets, she went 9.825 and 9.65. So really focused here on not only the dynamics, but those landings that have been critical for all of these teams. She's getting their rotation started with the hat. Your Chanko stop fall. That's exactly what she wanted to start off the meet. Moving right over to Texas women's. On the floor, we've got Emily Six. And there you see Penn State on balance beam. Ava Piedrita in the leadoff spot. Really nicely done acro series. For Penn State, this is one of their two all-arounders that we'll see this afternoon. The only team without an all-arounder is Texas women's. They've got some two and three event specialists, but nobody on all four that we'll see. Over on the floor, we just saw an unfortunate fall on that double back on our last pass. Just over-rotated it a little too much. And then right over to the beam, a stuck round off one and a half dismount. What a great lead off for Penn State. Yeah, fantastic job out of Pedrita. We did miss Lex Ortega's vault for the Wolfpack. Another Yurchenko full. That was pretty much a stick in place, I'd say. I'd say a hop, hop in place, but they may still take a small deduction on that one, unfortunately. I think they'll definitely take a deduction on that, but I did like the height that she got off the table. That was one of her better vaults that I've seen her do this year. Definitely up next is gonna be Krista Zoltovich, one of their seniors out of Pennsylvania. Another Yurchenko full. Nice block and Wow, I would say another stick in place. That's what we're calling it. Nicely done, though. So far, this Wolfpack team is on a roll, and I, I love their debut of their new leotards. We'll take another look here at this full. Nice block off the table. A little bit piked down on that landing, but she knew where it was and was able to control it. Again, at this point in the season, they're wanting those controlled landings and those little details are what each team is gonna be focusing on because that small 10th or small half a 10th can really make up a big difference at the end of the meet. Take our first look over at the University of Pennsylvania on the uneven bars. You can see she did that bail to handstand, saved it because she could have fallen over on that. Really good save though. Moving through the routine and ending with a blindfold, double tuck. Nicely done. So a fantastic bar routine for the Quakers as Ashley Knight completes her vault. Oh, she almost had that stick. I know I've said it before, but that's one of my favorite vaults to watch just with how big it is, how much power she has. Fantastic job as a freshman as we move over to Gabrielle Galantine on beam. Just getting set for her dismount. Round off one and a half. She looked a little bit lost on that landing, so that'll be a bigger deduction for that step forward. This is Madeline Ghost for Texas Women's. Starts off with really nice double pike. They're really going to be looking for these next routines to be good and clean hits after that first fall.
So Emily Shepard for the Wolfpack. Huge Ortega fall. Wow, I think that Every might have been time. a stick, yeah. Every time. Notice the distance. Not only did she have a ton of height on that, but just the distance from the table to her landing. And she just absolutely nailed that. That'll be a big score for NC State. All right, so up next on beam for Penn State, this is Kalia McGilligut. Over on and the floor, ending with that front handspring, Rudy. Nice routine to get them back on track. And Zara Gazdek on the uneven bars for the Quakers. Nice blind full. Really high double top to a suck dismount. Chloe Negretti on her vault. Another big Yurchenko full. You know, I really liked on all of their vaults, I know I said it before, but that controlled landing. They all looked very tight and confident and just aware of what was going on in their landings. And that's all you can ask for. Absolutely. And one of the big discussions in gymnastics this year has been, do we stick to the 995 start value on those Yurchenko fulls and get the landing or do we try to throw the 10 and, and take that risk? And, and so I think NC State put a really strong vault team together today. So McGilligot finishing up as NC State's got an exhibition. Really nicely done too. Another good controlled landing. Nice height off the table. When you're doing these falls and you're starting from a 995, it's so crucial that the execution is spot on in order to get those high scores. Absolutely. And in all honesty, NC State is graduating four of their vault lineup, so they can use all of the exhibitions possible. All right, so back over to floor. This is Steely King. Starting off with a huge double pike. Looks like she kept her foot in bounds, but she did have a bigger lunge on that. Jordan Barrow on the right side of your screen there on the uneven bars. A nice one and a half front layout on floor. This is Amani Herring on beam for Penn State. She starts out with a nice front toss to a backhand spring. One of the more unique acro series that we've seen. The left side of your screen, a floor just ended with a really nice, almost open double back, which is difficult to do as your last pass. She could have had a little bit more control on that landing. So Steely King last week, a 9-8 for that floor routine. So far, so good on this beam routine. Really solid. Looking for a stick. Oh, wow. And she was on her tippy toes on that landing. But great job Definitely holding that. In there. You'd be impressed with how strong gymnast feet and toes are. I mean, just gripping the ground, trying to get those sticks. Anything for a stick, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so a great routine for the sophomore for Penn State as we take a look back over on the floor for Texas women's. Right side of your screen there, Sophia Paris on the uneven bars. I love that bail to handstand, just the extension that she's getting throughout the bar routine. 
double tuck, dismount, small hop backwards. But I liked the extension throughout that entire bar routine. Showing off those lines. So NZ State is completed on their first event. We've still got one bar routine and a couple beam and floor routines left in rotation number one. This is Emma Burlich, junior out of Tampa, Florida. Bella Salcedo on beam for the Nittany Lions. Salcedo also a junior out of Arlington, Texas. You can see right there on that first pass, she did a front tuck through to that double tuck. I like this view of the beam because it's, it's similar to what the judges see. You can really see if some of those splits are 180 degrees, even though our camera's up a little higher. But this is very similar to what those judges you see behind the beam actually view when they're writing on their paper. Over on floor, ending with a double pike. She had to hold that double pike a little bit longer. One thing I think I'd like to see from Texas women's is just more sharpness on those landings because they're great tumbling passes, but again, I think it would be less seduction if they were a little bit sharper. Absolutely, so a great job out of Berlich on that floor routine as we move back over to Penn on the uneven bars. Skylar Carrico. Beautifully done, dismount. Small hop backwards on that, but she had really great form throughout that bar routine. Let's take another look here at her dismount. You could see the full twisting, double back right there. Sometimes it's harder to land on that mat that's so squishy. It kind of gives you more of a bounce, I would say, mm -hmm. instead of really absorbing the mat. Absolutely. And the gym, there's no deduction for that. The gymnast can put a four incher in. That right. one's an eight inch mat. They can choose, right? There's, there's sting mats that we see on floor a lot of times. So they can choose the, the mat of their landing preference. So floor and beam, both starting at the same time for beam. This is Maddie Johnston for Penn State. And then we've got Daisy Woodring for Texas women's. Really beautiful double pike. She broke out of that so easily. And this is a, a event for her that she went so high on on Friday. She had a 985. So they're going to be looking to count a big score from her tonight. A little I give bit a, shaky on that sheep jump on. So I give a lot of these teams credit for competing midweek, a Thursday, Friday meet, and then turning around and doing it again on Sunday, especially for those that are in the all around. It really is so difficult. And since we're already in March, it really does wear and tear on your body too, as well as the mental aspect of it all. So really impressive that they're, all these teams have been able to do that. We talked to the Penn State coach prior to the meet, and one of her reasons behind it was the last couple times they've made postseason, they, they've been part of the play-in to regionals to where they do have to do two full meets back-to-back. -back. Absolutely, and you could just see that double tuck to end that routine. I love the personality throughout, but wow, she nailed that, and that is gonna be a high score. Fantastic job out of Daisy Woodring for the Pioneers. I just, wow, on this open up. Did you see how high her chest was on the landing? She knew exactly where she was at. 
And then, like you said, a bunch of personality on this floor routine. So we've got one, five down, one to go for Texas women. This is an exhibition on bars. This is Connie Sue, one of the seniors out of Franklin, Tennessee. Blindfold into that double tuck dismount. She did hit her feet on the bar. I don't know if you could notice that on the cameras, but she hit her feet, but was still able to pull that around. So well done. This is Ashley Mall for Penn State. Back in spring, back Leo Acro series, a little bit off, but saved it from being a bigger deduction. Ashley's doing an exhibition routine. And then the final floor competitor, this is Sof Sophie Hernandez. Sophie, a season high on this event of a 9.95. She starts with that front tuck through to double pike. We've seen a lot of powerful tumbling and really good passes from this Texas women's floor team. I feel like the level of gymnastics, like just the caliber of gymnastics across the board, even from some of the schools that you don't typically hear of, it, the level, the bar has just been raised so much. Absolutely. It's always good to see when programs are added to the NCAA, which again, just gives more gymnasts the opportunity to keep competing. You can see she did that one and a half front layout and did step out of bounds. So that'll be an extra deduction there. So a fantastic finish for Sophie and the Pioneers on floor. All the other events are completed, but I do believe we have one exhibition. So while we, while we wait for the score to come in, we're gonna take another quick look. This front tuck through to a huge double pike. And then right here, notice, Nicely done tumbling pass. It was a little bit off to that right side, which cut off some of the, the distance that she had, which is why she stepped out. And for those that are new to watching gymnastics, the big thing with that out of bounds is that one-tenth deduction comes off of the average score. So if, if the judges calculate their scores, they come up with a 9.7, it automatically lowers to a 9.6. So that can make a really big difference in that overall team total. So while we wait for the exhibition, let's talk a little bit about just some of the points of emphasis for floor. Yeah, you see their difficulty, presentation, and landings. Difficulty is huge. The judges really want to see those bigger skills. And, you know, now we're seeing a lot of two-pass floor routines. I would say the three-pass, you know, obviously goes a little bit longer of a way sometimes because that does add to that difficulty. The presentation, that's the artistry, the dance that we're seeing. Even though people may think it doesn't play a role, you can get deducted for artistry. And then the landings, we want to see those controlled one lunge or one step landings on each tumbling pass. Absolutely. So uh, exhibition, this is Cami Zerlingo. She's a sophomore out of Littleton, Colorado. All these teams really, again, looking at what routines are they going to have to replace for next year. There's a lot of seniors, super seniors, the, the graduate students that got an extra year due to COVID, but that's ending. And so there's a lot of teams that are going to have to replace several scores over the next couple of years. Yeah, and we talk about 
these exhibition routines, which depending on the team, it's nice to have, you know, seven, eight, even nine gymnasts in your lineup, but that's a little friendly competition that you have each and every day in practice, and that's what you don't see here on the TV screens is that you're, they're having, you know, a competition every day in the gym trying to fight for those top six lineup, lineup spots. spots. And we actually talked to some of the head coaches that were planning to warm up seven, eight, even nine gymnasts just a couple hours ago, and then was going to pick the best ones from those. Yeah, we've seen that a couple times, which is definitely an interesting way to do it. But a lot of teams, like you said, they'll warm up a couple and then pick the best six that day. Absolutely. So Cami Zerlingo finishing up on the floor exercise. That means we're one rotation down right now. NC State's got a fairly narrow lead, uh, just a little over two tenths in that with Penn and Penn State both tied at a 49. We're going to take a quick break and come back with rotation number two. One rotation down in Raleigh, North Carolina, and you can see number 21, NC State's got a narrow lead over number 23, Penn State, and the University of Pennsylvania putting up a 49 even on bars. Those were some phenomenal bar routines. We're going to take a quick look. We've got it. It's senior day, so let's take a look at some of the seniors that are going to be graduating. So Lex Ortega, one of the graduate seniors. I love looking at the baby photos. They're so cute. Makes me want to pull old photos out. <laughs> Emily Shepard and the gymnast that she has turned into be just absolutely phenomenal. Madison Benson, who we got to see exhibition on the floor last week. Always so fun to watch. And then Brooke Connolly is the NC State student manager. So stick around, rotation at number two coming up next. Welcome back to Raleigh, North Carolina. We are ready for action as the gymnasts finish up their touch period for rotation number two. There you see there again the scores after rotation number one with NC State in the lead. Penn tying their season high on the uneven bars with a 49. And Penn State had that, that spot of starting on beam, ending up with a 49 as well. We're gonna keep moving through the rotations, taking a look at the lineups. Texas women's gonna be over on vault. And there you see, similar to NC State, four out of six of those lineup spots are taken by seniors. One thing I was impressed with it, you just mentioned was Penn State starting on beam and starting with that 49 right out of the gate. That's just something to highlight. Absolutely. NC State moving on to the uneven bars. A good mix of their upper and underclassmen at this point, but being anchored by two of their seniors. Penn going to be on the balance beam with four seniors starting off their lineup. And then Penn State is going to be moving to the floor exercise. No seniors in their lineup this afternoon, uh, but again, a great slew of individuals, including two all-arounders that we'll get to see on all four events. So this is Ashley Mull getting some last words of wisdom from her coach as Texas women takes to the vault. This is Emily Six. She was in the leadoff spot on floor as well. She starts with her Yurchenko full. Notice how she had to pike down on that landing. So that's going to be where the biggest deduction comes from. But a solid leadoff for Texas women's. 
Ashley Mall just debuted on this event last week, a freshman from Spring, Texas. Went 9.775 and 9.8, so very strong start. Right over to the balance beam. This is Kirsten Belkoff. Again, University of Pennsylvania seniors in the first four spots on this beam team. She starts out that routine with the triple series. Very difficult, back handspring, back handspring, back layout. Into another difficult switch leap sheep jump. So far, so good on balance beam. Over on floor. Last tumbling pass, that one and a half front layout. You can see the jump she connected out of that, which adds more difficulty. But a nice solid start for Penn State. And then almost had that stick on beam, that one and a half. Trying to hold on. I've been really impressed with the sticks, though, so far, and the attempts to, to stick. We've seen a couple small steps here and there. So for NC State, this is Kaylee Adamides on the uneven bars, a sophomore from Long Island. She starts that routine with the Maloney, right down to the low bar with that packed. She's another gymnast that has such beautiful extensions. Looked like she missed her foot or missed that straddle. Definitely. But covered it well, just did a kip and redid it. I mean, that's, you know, making adjustments in between the routine. It'll definitely be a deduction again, something that maybe the average viewer doesn't, wouldn't have noticed. Right. Uh, but definitely something that the judges Notice, uh, this is Peyton Childs for the Wolfpack. She starts out with that Jaeger release move right into that shoot over to the low bar. So Adam Mighty is with that air, not necessarily a fall, but an air. Blindfold a double tuck. But Childs able to pull it back for the Wolfpack team as we move back over to Penn State on the four. This is Alyssa Kramer. Really difficult. Front hand spring, double full punch front. Kramer, a freshman from State College, Pennsylvania. So one of their local gymnasts. Sophia Isabel on vault. Huge, Yurchenko full. So I believe that was Steely King actually on vault. Really nicely done vault though. Love the amplitude and the block she got. Over on beam, we just saw another triple series. Back handspring, back handspring, back layout. I believe this is Sarah Kenefick on the balance beam. Not to be confused with Anna Kenefick, who's going to be competing right after her. We just saw on floor that last pass was that Rudy into that beautifully done back handspring, or I'm sorry, back layout step out. Madeline Reed for the Wolfpack on the right side of your screen as Kenefick finishes up her beam routine. The Kenefick sisters, seniors from Charlotte, North Carolina. Then that dismount was a little bit short. Looked like her knee almost hit. She kept it from not hitting, otherwise that would have counted as a fall. So great save on that, but again, that'll be a heavy deduction. We saw Daisy Woodring on the left side of your screen there for vault for Texas women's. 
Take another look. She had plenty of height, just not enough rotation. She knew it as soon as she landed. But hey, she saved it from being a fall. So final spot for Texas women's. This is going to be Caitlin Holland on vault as Daisy, Daisy Woodring puts up a 9-8 right before her. Beam and floor both getting ready to be started. So again, Anna Kenefic on balance beam for the University of Pennsylvania. Really nice, your chain go full. Didn't have enough control on that landing. That was a pretty significant hop backwards, but I love the entry into it. This has to be a little more clean on the landing, and that'll be a high score. Ava Beadrida on the floor for Penn State. She starts off with a full end. We don't see too many of those because of the difficulty in that skill. And then Katie Harper is going to be up next for the Wolfpack on bars. Back over to Vault. This is an exhibition from Cami Zerlango again. Exhibitioned on the floor as well as Vault. They've got four seniors that they're going to be needing to replace for next year as Katie gets started on her bar routine. And so far, so good. She did a ginger release move and has had really good form throughout. Also in the upper left box on floor, we just saw that double tuck to end the routine. And wow, that was good. A fantastic routine from both Penn State and NC State. So Texas women's is complete on vault. Vault is always hard because it goes so quick and then you've got beam and floor that take quite a bit longer. So Texas women's is through six plus an exhibition. We are midway through the floor lineup. And beam taking a little bit longer to get their next gymnast up. Right back over to the floor. This is Amani Herring. <laughs> Herring, a sophomore out from Denville, New Jersey. Getting ready for her first tumbling pass here. Really difficult skill. We do not see that as a first pass often, that Arabian. Absolutely. So a fantastic lead off as Lex Ortega finishes up her routine for the Wolf Pack. And then Anna Kenefic, you see on the top left of your screen. Over on beam, that round off one and a half dismount, a hop in place, but nicely done. Then straight over to floor, that one and a half front layout to finish the routine. That's going to be a good score for Penn State. 
What a great routine out of pairing on the floor exercise. I want to take another look at this first tumbling pass. Just watch the height she gets on that Arabian. Front landing is always difficult, and she had no problem with it. Again, that's going to be a big score for their floor lineup. I think she knew it, too, with the smile <laughs> after that last tumbling pass. So career high on that event of a 9.95 as we move back over to the bars with Emily Shepard. She's going to start this routine with the straddle Jaeger. Down to that low bar with her pack, Salto. NC State's really looking for a big score out of Shepard on this routine. And so far, she could get one if she could get a stick right here on this huge dismount. Wow. Every time. A cold stick right there. And that's exactly what they were looking for. Every time. That career high just a couple weeks ago, but 9.975 on the uneven bars. It'll be close. I don't know if it'll quite be there, but pretty close as we move back to Kalia McElligot on floor for Penn State and Campbell Marr on the balance beam for the Quakers. And she starts off with the back handspring back layout acro series. One thing too from this Penn team on balance beam is just the form that they've had throughout all their routines is something I've loved to see. Yeah. On floor, we saw that double pike first pass. She stayed in bounds. The air awareness that these athletes have is crazy to know where you're actually at mid air. Absolutely. It's and like a superpower. It, it is. And even if it, you'll see them, I mean, you know, if the gymnast is off of the, the diagonal perfectly by a foot, they know not to step forward. They'll step sideways so that they don't go out of bounds. And then that stunt gainer full off the side for Campbell Marr. Really impressive beamer team. So Campbell Marr finishing up that fourth spot for the University of Pennsylvania as Kalia gets ready for her final tumbling pass. We'll see a big double tuck from her. No issues on the height there. She was able to break out. And when we're referring to these floor landings and the controlled landings, it's their chest being up, not down, not knees or legs too squatty. We'll take another look here so pay to show you. To the, yeah, pay attention to the landing. See the block she gets in the beginning, and then she's landing almost like she's sitting up, right? And that's what the judges are ultimately looking at when deciding how much to take off. So McGilligut in the fifth spot. We've got one more for the Nittany Lions. Bella Salcedo will be in that sixth place spot. Back over to the beam, this is Skylar Carrico in place number five. And there are some teams, so the lineup order matters. There's some teams that put all their, their strong scores at the end. There's some that start off with their lead score. Every team has a slightly different strategy. And it's, diff it's interesting to see and hear about the different strategies that different teams and coaches have. That's always something that I've been so curious about. Wow, and a huge double front. Also, a difficult tumbling pass we don't see often. So I've loved just the variety in Penn State's tumbling. Super fun to watch. Like you said, you just don't see that often. Yeah, and that double Arabian we saw and the double front are those front landings, which are absolutely more difficult. Again, Skylar Carrico on the left side of your screen. Just a small wobble out of her acro series. One thing to point out too is that 
now that these teams are gearing up for a postseason, it's not as much about hitting those six for six routines. That's expected at this point. You know, in the beginning of season when you're playing around with lineups or it's the first couple of meets, you expect some mistakes here and there. But now it's not about the falls or, or about the hits. It's about how are we going to get that extra 10. Really nice tumbling run there. And these meets could come down to a quarter 10 being the deciding factor, especially when you get into postseason. Absolutely. So Salcedo finishing up the Penn State lineup on floor at the midway point. We've still got one beam routine. I wanted to take another look here at this last pass because there was so much going on. That front layout to a front full and then to a huge front pike. That's three skills in a row that she made look way too easy. <laughs> and we, that's what we always talk about, saying that last tumbling salto, you want to rise. And she did a fantastic job at showing us the way it should be done. I was going to say, I think the first one was the lowest, and she got a little higher in the second, and then even higher on the third. So that was textbook. <laughs> so a great job out of the Penn State floor team. Samantha Wu in the anchor spot for the Quakers on beam. So Penn, Penn, University of Pennsylvania had an interesting order for their beam routine with four seniors starting off. So some of the more experienced ones and ended with some upper or underclassmen. Your leadoff spot on beam is, in my opinion, one of the most difficult spots out of any lineup, but also any anchor position that you have is also difficult, especially no matter freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior, but freshman anchoring is also really impressive. Absolutely. So you saw the, the tail end of a judges conference for the last beam routine. So discussing Skylar Carrico's beam performance. And typically it's when they're not in range. So the judges have to be within two tenths of each other for the score to actually be averaged. If they're outside of that two tenths, then they have to come together and figure out why, essentially. Uh, so they got it taken care of, and now we get to watch the sophomore anchor, this University of Pennsylvania beam team. Really nice front aerial combination there to start off the routine. I loved how graceful that back handspring back layout was. She was so light on the beam and on her toes all throughout. So far, she seems to be the most confident out of the beam routines we've seen. They've had some really great execution, but then you see just little minor wobbles throughout. Confidence is huge on every event, but Especially on beam. I don't know, Rachel, what are your thoughts on the fake it till you make it? Because I feel like that's what we always used to say and joke about, but it wasn't really a joke. We were, you know, you got to fake it till you make it. Ab Absolutely. So, and beam is one of those events. If you don't love beam, then you're not going to perform <laughs> well. So here's that acro series again. Very well done, well executed. And then into this dismount, this gainer backpike off the back. She was mad about not getting that stick, but really nice and beautiful routine to watch. You see those little facial cues because <laughs> they, they do this day in and day out. This is what they, they practice so much for and for it not to translate from the gym to the competition floor. They, they get mad at themselves. Yeah, and I think one thing to note on that is just you want it so, so bad. So you have to be able to find that balance of not going too much, but also not holding back. You've got to, you know, meet yourself in the middle, but it's so difficult and it's a lot harder than you think. So 
all of these athletes have done an amazing job. But yes, you can see it on their faces or even like we said, gripping in their toes. Their toes are, you know, trying so hard to stay still because they want it so bad. They are definitely doing their best and not just for them, but for their team as well. So we do have one beam exhibition while we wait for Samantha Wu's score to be tallied. That's the best part about college gymnastics is it's such a team sport. It's an individual sport, maybe, because you're up on the events by yourselves, but it's ultimately a team sport. It's as team as you can make right. gymnastics. A lot of these gymnasts coming from club gymnastics where it really is individualized. So this is Olivia Van Horn. She's a junior out of Audubon, Pennsylvania. Wow, I loved that front aerial to the front handspring. Very unique acro series. Great toe point and form also. That's something to point out. When the judges are looking too, you can tell during the routines when the form is really good, it just looks better, right? And Absolutely. sometimes form can be harder to teach. So I would always prefer a clean, more basic routine that just looks really pretty over a routine that you're packing with difficulty, but your form is all over the place, right? Absolutely, very well said. Very well said. So the, the cleanliness has something to do with it. So. We are midway through NC State still in the lead, but narrowly. And uh, again, many don't say that it, the meet doesn't start until you get to beam, which is where NC State is headed. So stick around for the third out of four rotations. Back in Raleigh on senior day, and NC State has the lead at the midway point. After two, we've got a close matchup between NC State and Penn State, which is what we were expecting with University of Pennsylvania not far behind and Texas women's having a great show out as well. So right now, and, and throughout the broadcast, we've been talking really about the national qualifying score. So that's how the, all these teams are ranked 21 and 23 with NC State and Penn State. And you can see how they actually break that down. So you're going to take your top six scores. Three of those have to be away scores. So for everyone except NC State, today's going to be an away score for them. Grab the top six. The other three can be home or away. You drop the high score. Right now, NC State dropping that 197.575 they had a couple weeks ago, and then averaging the other five. And then we've got our postseason schedule coming up. So again, the ACC championship, first time in 40 years, March 23rd in Greensboro, Big Ten in Lansing. The gymnastics each East Conference in New Haven, Connecticut, and the Midwest Independent in St. Charles. So again, all of those taking place March 23rd. They'll have the regional selections, and then you've got regionals and championships. And again, we talked about Penn State, and NC State's been in the same spot over the last couple of years where they have a play-in now for regionals, and both teams have always been in that play-in spot, which is really rough because they've got three meets in two days, essentially. Right, and that's why we talk about how much each tenth matters and how those execution and those landings and those details really play a role in these postseason meets and the regional selections and where they're going to go and the chances that they get to make it to the national championship. So that's something to just be aware of as well. Absolutely. So we will be back with rotation number three. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back as we 
head to the beginning of rotation number three. Again, NC State with the narrow lead over Penn State, followed by University of Pennsylvania and Texas women's. NC State going to be on balance beam for their third rotation, where they put up a high score of a 49-425 just the other day. So Penn State going to be on the vault. There we've got a great look at the lineup with the two all-arounders, Kalia McGilligut and Ava Payadrita, anchoring on that rotation. Texas women's over to the uneven bars after a great vault lineup win, anchored with, again, their senior, Caitlin Hoyland. NC State's beam rotation anchored by that triple threat in three of their graduate to seniors. So tons of experience coming in on the back half of that Wolfpack team. Again, coming off of a season high over 49-4 just the other day. And Pennsylvania will be on the floor exercise. Again, a fantastic lineup, a great mix between under and upperclassmen uh, as they look to hit that 49 barrier on this event. So the team touch is done. Judges have taken control of their events, and Penn State's going to get started on the vault with Jessica Johansson. She starts out with that nice Yurchenko full. Great landing on that. I would have loved to have seen a little more height off the table, but again, a solid vault. Meg Adler for the Wolfpack on beam, the sophomore just down the road out of Chapel Hill. Beautiful, that can spring back layout acro series. Texas women's on the uneven bars is Lainey Hunt. And an unfortunate fall from her on that release move. And then Anna Kenefick for Penn on the floor. A round off double pike to start that floor routine. Always tough to get back up after a fall on then even bars, just the momentum. Sometimes we see athletes having to redo the entire bar routine to get that bonus and credit for whatever it, it was, skill it was that they missed. Nice handstand on top of the bar though. She held that for a couple of seconds and then ends with a stuck double tuck. So way to go on pulling the routine back around and finishing off nicely. Adler finishing up her beam routine. A season high of a 9.85. Looked like a pretty good beam routine. That was a really good beam routine. Solid start for NC State. So Adler with some high fives all around as Anna Kenefick finishes up her floor routine for the Quakers. So Kalia McGillicott for the Nittany Lions on vault. Really nice block on that table. That's going to be a solid score for Penn State. So three of four done for Kalia as Maddie Johnston takes to the vault. Wow, great job. She could have easily taken a step forward on that landing, but she saved it. That was just a quick and easy Yurchenko <laughs> full, it looks like for Absolutely. her. Absolutely. <laughs> Macy Jennings for the Wolfpack, their beam specialist. Zara Gazdek for the University of Pennsylvania on floor. And then for Texas women's on the uneven bars, this is Cami Zerlingo, who we've seen exhibition a couple of times. She's really going to be looking to get this team back on track for Texas women. Starts out with that pipe through. Jaeger release move. Down to the bail to handstand. She's moving this through this routine really nicely. 
going to look for a stock dismount here on bars. Double layout. And she held on. Might have a slight deduction <laughs> on that lean forward, but way to get them back on track. She did her job. Absolutely. And again, you put up six, you only count five, so they can drop that first score as Jennings finishes up her beam routine. With a stock dismount. I feel like we have seen quite a few sticks tonight, which is really exciting. Absolutely. Zara finishing up her floor routine. The double pike. So Pennsylvania looking for that 49 on floor. The last couple of meets just under at a 48.825 and then a 48.925 on Thursday. Over on ball, Amani Herring. Another Yurchenko full. Slight pike down on that landing, but great distance from the table. So for the Wolf Pack in that third spot is going to be Katie Harper, the freshman out of Columbus, Ohio. Bella Salcedo. Wow, really difficult vault. You could see she did that round off twisted mid into, you know, the block. It was block. so fast. Yeah, such a quick twist. You might not have ca caught that, but ends with that front pike and front landing. Yeah, Leah Gilmore for Texas women's on bars. Again, while Harper's midway through her beam routine. On beam, that really graceful back handspring, back layout. We got another stick on bars on that double back dismount. They're really picking it back up for Texas women's. And TW, really, again, looking for a good away score to add to their NQS. So back over to the floor exercise. This is Marissa Lassiter. On beam, we saw Harper do that front toss. No problems there. Now this dismount. Front full. Wow, and she stuck it. She's got a career high on this event. Nine, I believe, just the other day, nine, eight, seven, five, and, and looking for another big score. Ava Piedrahita for Penn State on vault. Wow. Another very quick. Yurchenko half on front pike. That was one of the prettiest vaults we've seen today. She made that it definitely look was. like she I loved your dropped. reaction. <laughs> I yeah, loved your the, reaction. That was a yeah, raw reaction. Wow. Lassiter on the floor with her team in front, just doing all the choreography. <laughs> On the uneven bars, it's Brooke Ferrari. Really strong handstand right on top of the bar to start that routine. And so far, she's flowing through this routine really nicely. So we've talked about some very unique skills. Lex Ortega with her unique acro series coming up. Wow, that bar routine was also a stuck double layout dismount. Just incredible form throughout. Something that the judges are really going to like to see. Texas women's a 49-125 as a season high on floor. And they are putting up some big numbers. Absolutely. We just saw, like you mentioned, Lex Ortega do that difficult back handspring into the Anodi as her acro series. And she's been rock solid on this. I know in the past she's had a couple of issues, but so far since we've watched her, I have not seen any. I feel like last year she had some, some issues with it, uh, but this year she seems really solid. 
Absolutely. And solid on that dismount is love. Well. Absolutely love it. NC State looking to push another 49-4 on beam as we move back over to Penn on the floor. Skylar Carrico currently on the screen. The sophomore out of Toms River, New Jersey. A season high of a 985. She started out with that one and a half front layout. One thing I like about her is just the sharp movements that she has in her dance and in her tumbling. Looking like she is having a ton of fun as Caroline Bounds gets ready to finish up her bar routine. She ends with that blindfold double tuck. Oh, just over rotated on that landing. She had enough height and it seemed like enough power, but sometimes when you're doing those double tucks and you're grabbing your legs, you pull a little too much. Just hold on a little too long. And I was thinking throughout the routine, I was like, this is gonna be great. They can drop that first score. And I thought too early. Yeah, unfortunately, they'll have to count a fall. But over on floor, nicely done, double back to finish off that routine. So Carico wraps up as Emily Shepard mounts the beam. Talk about sharp movements. Emily Shepard also just is so elegant but sharp in her dance movements and in her skills too. We'll see here this back handspring back layout acro series. Spot on with that. There you saw that score come in from Brooke Ferrari on bars for Texas women, a 9.925 but unfortunately they will have to count a fall. You can see the confidence throughout this beam routine. She's right on cue, just flows through. She is in her own little rhythm, in her own little bubble. She makes it look too easy. She really does, and right now if she could get this Stuck dismount. It's going to be a really high score for Emily Shepard. She got it. Held on. She held on. She didn't have to do an arm circle, but you could tell she was leaning back a little bit. Great job. So a fantastic finish for Shepard on the beam as we move over. Caitlin Holland, Hoyland, sorry, on the uneven bars as Sarah Kenefick takes to the floor. Really nice bar routine so far. I love the handstands and wow. She just sucks right up on that double tuck dismount. And Nicely Texas done. women's, yeah, they can they can swing bars. Just a couple unfortunate mishaps today. Yeah, just the extensions and the toe point that I've seen throughout some of the gymnasts for Texas women on bars, I've been really impressed with. She ends with that front double full, which is another really difficult skill. So Kenefick finishing up a season high of a 9.875. I feel like that routine may be fairly close as we move back over to beam with Chloe Negretti. Really nice front aerial to back handspring. This is an athlete that you want on your beam team, on your team in general, but on your beam team, just because of how fierce of a competitor she is. And I mean, look at her up there. It's like an intimidation, but also in the best way. 
that she just looks like she's going to attack the event, and she does it every single time. And again, NC State already put up five for five on beam. So Chloe can just kind of leave it all out there as we have an exhibition on bars for Texas women's. A nice high Jaeger release move over on bars. Legretti is going to be looking for the stick on this double fall. And she got it. She moved back a little bit. That's the hard part, is that she has to hold it for one second. So that was, was that the one second? I think last year it would have been a stick, but this year with the new rule, I think that's going to be a little deduction. But that does not take away from the gorgeous beam routine that Absolutely. she did, just Let's, did. Let's see again. We'll take another look. I, I think I can count to one, but you can tell she's still moving. Can see her Kim Landris, her hands are in the air. Like, that is a stick. I'm done. Salute the <laughs> judges. All right, Emma Davies finishing up for Penn on floor. And that was a huge double pike she did. She had too much power, so unfortunately did go out of bounds. But I always say too much power is a good problem to have. The coaches would definitely rather you err on the I went too big side than I held back and fell. Absolutely. Exhibition by Maddie Hall for the Wolfpack. Maddie's been in and out of lineup, but keeping her in this exhibition spot, again, kind of keeps her in that mentality in case they need her, but also as they look at replacing senior routines for next year. Yeah, and like we've said a couple times throughout the broadcast, now that we are nearing the postseason and championships and regionals, you're kind of in a rhythm with your team in that lineup. When you're in practice and you're training every day, you just become used to, here's the lineup. There's not really too many adjustments, I'd say, that will be made unless somebody gets hurt or they need mm -hmm. to take them out. I would say you're trying to, you know, have that simulation of the lineup and the practice is what we're competing with so that there aren't any changes in competition. So far, so good for Maddie. We do have one exhibition on floor as well for Pennsylvania. Just a small hop on that landing out of Maddie, but NC State's beam team just put up a big number. And we've seen them do that all year. You know, they have just continued to climb and peak at the right time. A lot of coaches, I think, will say, we just want to peak at the right time. And what that really looks like is you want to be having those high scores when the NQS is starting to count and obviously at your regionals and championship meet. Absolutely. You definitely want your, your gymnast in the best shape with the most confidence right here at the end of season. Most of these teams only have one week left until that conference championships. And then after that, it's regionals, nationals. That's when we used to say, hey, now you're on autopilot. Yes. Like you've done the work, you've done the training, you're on, you're strictly on autopilot. And that's what we used to say when I was competing. That was the motto. Which you should be. Yeah, the, exactly. If you don't have that skill by now, <laughs> you're, you're not, not getting it. No. You're not getting it in season. <laughs> Work on it for next year. All right, so in the exhibition spot, this is Marigold Garrett, the junior out of Sherborne, Massachusetts. Starts off with a front full, front full. I like that combination.
I will say both with Penn and T Texas women's, I've been really impressed with their gymnastics, with the cleanliness of it. That's one thing, yeah, that we were saying earlier is it's hard to teach good form. It's doable, but it's just more difficult. And I love, like you said, just the execution and the cleanliness that we've seen throughout. And that's something that the judges really like as well. Yeah, some really great gymnastics out of all four teams. So that should wrap up rotation number three. There you see NC State still in the lead, extends it by just a few tens. And we're gonna take a quick break while we get ready for the fourth and final rotation here in Raleigh. Welcome back to Raleigh, North Carolina. We are inside Reynolds Coliseum as we get set for the fourth and final rotation here on Senior Day. So NC State remains in the lead. Penn State closed in just a little bit after the second rotation, but they, the Wolfpack was able to extend even further on beam with Ortega and Shepard putting up nine nine two fives respectively. Here's a quick look at the team snapshot again. NC State in the 21st spot. So they're looking to drop a 196 score. That's a road score. Um, so again, improving on the NQSs, Penn State, Pennsylvania, and Texas women's again, all looking for a good road score so that they can drop whatever that lowest one is right now that they're counting. You can see four different conferences represented here which is always fun. And again, Penn actually ranked in the top in the GEC. So the gymnasts are gonna finish up their touch. Stick around for rotation number four as the Wolfpack takes to floor. Welcome back inside Reynolds Coliseum. We're getting closer and closer to the postseason. And NC State still on top inside Reynolds. They're going to be headed to the floor where we will see them close out with their three graduate seniors. They call them their triple threat, which is always fun to watch. Penn is going to be on the vault. So again, you see a great mix up there, ranked number one in the GEC on, on this event. And so we've seen some really good uh, gymnasts out of this Penn team. Penn State is gonna be on the uneven bars, ranked number 33 on this event with an NQS over 49. So looking forward to some really exciting gymnastics out of Penn State. Texas women's finishing up on balance beam, which is always a tough spot to be in. But there you see it is a slew of upperclassmen with only one freshman thrown into the mix. And then NC State, again, we've got Lex Ortega, Emily Shepard, and Chloe Negretti, all super seniors, along with Krista Zoltovich in her senior year, all making an impact on this floor lineup for the Wolfpack. So we've got some great gymnastics in this final rotation. Again, always excited to see what these teams are gonna put up, especially as they come off. This is, and they know it too, their bodies know it. This is the final rotation. Now they get a little bit of a break. Um, none of them have a dual meet coming up. Yeah, it's like they can take a big breath almost because they've had so many meets back to back. Absolutely. Some of these teams only practicing once or twice this past week. You can't really work on anything. Right, but that kind of goes into the point of the autopilot. You know, at this point, not ideal on your body to have meet after meet, but mentally wise and, and skill wise, it's just yeah. like you could do it in your sleep. And some of them, even when they're practicing, they're doing inner squads or mock meets just to keep that momentum going. So we are gonna get started on beam. This is Emily's six for Texas women's. And starts out over on vault to the right with Penn, a stuck Yurchenko fall. 
Absolutely. Uh, Isabel Song in their leadoff spot. Jessica Johansson for Penn State. She starts off with that Tkachev release move down to the low bar with that pack salto. Notice on beam, there was that front toss and she tried to do that jump out of it. It was a little bit off. So I'm not sure what the judges will deduct for that combination. But we got a double layout <laughs> stick over Two on bars. Landing. So beam and bars hitting those landings as Katja Edwards leads off the Wolfpack floor team. Katja made her debut just a couple weeks ago on this event and hasn't, I'm gonna knock on wood now, but has not scored <laughs> lower than a 9.8. That's something too, when your leadoff is scoring a 9.8 or higher, that's setting up the rest of your lineup for high potential scores. And, and that's ultimately the job of a leadoff, right? Is to hit and even better to hit with a high score. So Sarah Kenefick on vault for Pennsylvania. Final tumbling pass for Edwards. Huge double back. Again, impressive that that's the height she's getting on her last pass. Wow, great job. Yeah, fantastic routine out of the sophomore. This is the first tumbling pass that we missed. I think that first pass was just as high as her last one. Definitely, so great routine in the leadoff spot. This is Sophie Hernandez for Texas Women's. And Maddie Johnston for Penn State. Really nice blindfolded double tuck, another stick. The sticks are contagious today. I didn't think they were normally contagious between teams, but we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> This is Marissa Lassiter for Penn on vault. Great distance from the table to the landing. She had that hop, which is gonna be a deduction. But a nice vault over on beam. We saw Sophie Hernandez do a back handspring back layout acro series to start off the routine. So Lex Ortega. Then into the back handspring, one and a half. Small hop forward. Huge tumbling pass. Yeah, the landing could have been a little more controlled on that first pass. Skylar Carrico finishing up her vault. Ortega actually out of the floor lineup the last couple of weeks, but ready to be back in. And it's senior day, so a great opportunity to really come back and help the team out. Penn State on the bars. This is Kalia McGillicott. She's moving through this routine really nicely on floor, ending with that front layout, front fall. And then over on bars, another nice routine. Well done. So fourth rotation is well underway and these teams are fighting till the end. On the balance beam, Daisy Woodring it's so loud in here, too. The crowd is so energetic. I feel like my head's just going left to right. <laughs> Kirsten Belkoff for Penn on vault. And that was a nice Yurchenko half. 
Very straight, I mean, perfectly straight body. The execution on that was phenomenal. That is a blind landing, even though it's not quite the one and a half, it's still the same landing. So Woodring finishing up her beam routine. Round off one and a half. Didn't quite get the stick, but I loved how quick that cover up was. Definitely just the tiniest of hops there as Krista Zoltovich gets ready for her floor routine. Again, Zoltovich, one of the seniors that will be recognized at the end of the competition. Back over to bars, Gabrielle Galantine. We saw that Maloney down. Wow, another stock dismount for Penn State. They are fighting till the end, that's for sure. They absolutely are. I loved that bar routine. Just the form and the toe point throughout. Zoltovich really having fun on this final floor routine on home turf. Jordan Barrow for Penn in the anchor spot on vault. A nice Yurchenko full. That was a pretty significant hop backwards, so that's going to be a bit of a big deduction. On the floor, ending with a double back. She almost did not have to take a lunge, but took a small step. Great job. This is Emma Burledge for our Texas women's on beam as Krista gets some high fives from her teammates. a front toss combination. She had to make an adjustment midway through because she looked a little bit crooked on that landing. But then ends with the back handspring, gain her full off the side. So excellent job for Texas women's on beam. As we move back over to the uneven bars, Ava Payadrahita. She starts with that Maloney down to the pack salto. Just like on floor and beam, you have a rhythm. You still have a rhythm in cues on bars too. It's just harder to notice because you're on your hands the whole time. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Ashley Knight for the Wolfpack. She's been someone that's so fun to watch, just full of power and you'll see it right here. Start to the front double fall. I remember the, the very first home meet for NC State and watching her, and she was so timid and very shy, and now it is a performance. <laughs> yeah, she's broken out of her shell so much. That's one of my favorite things to watch with all these athletes, just seeing the confidence over the years, even over the meets that they have. And it can be it can be really tough, especially as a freshman, because in club gymnastics, it's not about the performance. It, it is, but it's the execution. In college, it's a show. You've got you've got an audience to perform for. That was one of my favorite parts about college, though, was floor and the performance, and honestly, the crowd that yes. gets into it. Your teammates are on the side doing your routine too, but all around you, the atmosphere is really what gives you that adrenaline. There's no better feeling, truly. Getting ready for her last tumbling pass. Huge, Rudy, and she's supposed to do a back layout step out out of that. She is, yeah, almost didn't have the rotation. Yeah, didn't have the rotation and missed that punch a bit. 
So we'll see what the judges take off on that. So Steely King on beam for TWU. Unfortunately came off on her acro series. So Texas women's already counting a fall from the uneven bars, hoping that this will be the only one on beam. As Maggie Mace wraps up for Penn State on the uneven bars. We've seen a lot of Penn State gymnasts do that Maloney down to the pack salto on bars. That last handstand looked a little short from our angle, but a nice double out to finish. Her head looked like it whipped a little back on that landing. So not the beam routine that Steely King wanted, but again, she's still got her teammate, Kaylin Hoyland, that can pick everything back up. Take another look here at this double layout. Really nice throughout, but just jerked it a little bit at the end. So again, she did a great job covering it though. The deduction will come from that step, but it was almost like she wasn't ready for, for that landing. But not to take away from, you know, the landings are hard. Like they hurt your ankles and they your do. feet. You know, it like almost sends a shock through your body. I remember we would always joke and be like, how, how hard is this landing? You know, at the different away meets we went to, um, the soft cushioning definitely was, was a lot of help when we got that. <laughs> Absolutely. And there we can see Emily Shepard and her all around total so far this afternoon. She now owns the program record for highest all around in NC State history. And the only gymnast to have an all around counting nine nine plus scores on all of the events. But yeah, you talk about those landings. And again, we see a lot of that on floor where they use the extra sting mats and that kind of thing to help relieve and alleviate some of the shock on their landings. I remember going from practice to like a hard basketball floor, essentially with mats on top of it. And that first meet is killer. Absolutely. Your body has to get used to it. This is an exhibition for Penn State on the uneven bars. Definitely had enough momentum to do a double layout. Yeah, I wonder if that's almost just like a timer that she was doing for the time being, because it definitely looked like she had plenty of power. So we've got a judges conference on floor and really discussing again that last pass out of Ashley Knight where she was supposed to do the layout step out, ended up doing a tuck, tucked-ish step out. Right, it'll be interesting to see what they do take on that because that is part of that combination pass like we mentioned and so not having that. She did do the combination but the second skill wasn't I don't know I don't if, know it, if is they would it, count it as a skill. I don't skill. know if that is a skill in the code of points. Right. Okay, let's so take let's, another look. Yeah, let's look at this here. So this out of the punch Rudy right here. You can see how she's bending her legs. It's supposed to be straight leg, which is a layout step out. I don't know that that is an actual skill in the code of points. So if it's not an actual skill, then you have to question, does that count as a combination of the two passes? And then does she have enough bonus? Does right. she have the right? Does she? Is that her two salto like, tumbling pass, which is a special requirement? There's a lot more that goes in. It's like a the domino scenes. effect. <laughs> it really is. And we had a judges conference on beam as well. But Madeline Ghost is ready to finish up for Texas women. Oh yes, my apologies. This is Caitlin Holland. The front aerial. You could see she was a little bit off on that uprise after the front aerial, but made a good adjustment. Still got the connection again, just kind of a little 
little wo bobble in between, wiggle. You'd be surprised if we watched balance beam from the front end of the beam. You would see majority of these athletes being so crooked and off, and they just cover it so well, you'd never know, looking at it from the side. Extremely impressive. And so, ends with a stuck dismount. A great routine out of Caitlin Hoyland as Texas women's finishes up. So Emily Shepard ready on floor. The judges came to an agreement on Knight's score. We're gonna see some huge tumbling right here. Starts with a double pike. Dropped out of that like it was nothing. <laughs> Emily definitely has those cat-like reflexes where she knows exactly where she is in the air at any given time. I think you hit it spot on, cat-like reflexes. And that's something you have to have as a gymnast. Second tumbling pass, front layout to front full. Again, if you look at the top part of your screen, you can see all of the teammates doing the dance with her. So not only do they know their floor routines, they know everybody else's floor routine. This is gonna be a big tumbling pass coming up for her right here. She can get a stick. And she stayed in bounds. She did, uh, so get a deduction for the foot coming up, but. Beautiful routine, I mean, just huge power and tumbling throughout. Almost had that, we spoke too soon, but again, that's still solid for NC State. All right, so taking another look at this humongous double pike to lead off. Again, she just dropped right out of that on the landing. Last pass, she gets the exact same height on that. But that's the air, aware, the air awareness. It almost, closer. she knew she was close to the edge. Right. It, it went, it traveled backwards more than she typically does. And so instead of taking a big lunge and going out, she right. took that small step, which I didn't quite get her to where she needed to be. And a good tumbling pass will have height, but it'll also have distance. And that's something you have to play around with when you're tumbling across the floor. You don't have unlimited, you know, space. So all those things play into each tumbling pass. So beam exhibition. This is Caroline Bounds. A beautiful back handspring, back layout, acro series. Chloe Negretti in the anchor spot for the Wolfpack floor team. We, I believe we'll have an exhibition. But Chloe, like we talked about on beam, just so intense in her gymnastics, in her dance, in her execution. She's just such a fierce competitor. I just think of the word fierce when I think of Chloe Negretti. Fierce is a great way to describe her. She started out with that double pike. She had a little too much power too, but covered it really well.
next tumbling pass, front full to a front layout. Chloe, another one similar to Emily that just knows exactly where she's at. She knows exactly how long the diagonal is on these floor tumbling passes. And you say cat-like reflexes, but on her jumps and her leaps, you see it as well. So looking for a stuck double tuck here. Almost had it bounced up on that one. Just so much power, which again, it's it's an exciting day. It's senior day. They're amped up. They yeah. really are. And so to be able to control that is really difficult on a spring-loaded floor. But a fantastic job out of Negretti. We're going to take a look at her first and last pass. Right here, she opens with a big double pike. I mean, wow, she saved that. She could have gone out of bounds easily or taken a couple steps. I kept that front foot down, and this one just that bounce back. Just a little hop. You can see she was debating, do I lunge? Do I stay with my feet yeah. together? But we do, yeah, you have to take into account, too, that it is their senior night. They're amped up. They've been doing so well. So nice job. Season high for Negretti of a 9.925. I don't know if it'll quite be a 9.925, but a fantastic job on that floor routine as Madison Benson gets ready to exhibition. So Benson exhibitioned last weekend as well. Always fun to see all the hard work pay off, especially as a senior. And she's been in and out of the lineup in past seasons. And she opened with a double pike. She had a lot of power on that, just broke out too early. So landed short on that. But the personality in this floor routine, I am loving. <laughs> She's having a blast out there. That one and a half front pike, great job on the save. That takes a lot of strength and muscles when saving a skill like that. It absolutely does. And again, when you're not used to being in the lineup consistently, you almost try to overdo it on certain things. Ending right here with a double tuck. And just, again, had so much power, just bounced out of it. Absolutely. I think she, again, opened a little too early at the end for that. Held on it just a, a half a second longer. I think she would have had a, a perfect landing on that routine. So that's the final competitor for this Wolfpack team. A lot of great, a lot of great gymnastics this afternoon. What are just, again, some final thoughts overall? I absolutely am just impressed with how this competition went. You can see over on the scores how close of a meet it was between NC State and Penn State. And then Penn with their 196, great job, just consistency throughout. Unfortunately for Texas women, they did have to count a fall, but they did a great job bouncing back on beam, which is a hard event to end on. But NC State should have a lot of confidence heading into their next couple meets, as well as Penn State. We knew that we were going to see some big gymnastics and some big scores. But overall, I was impressed with just the sticks that all the teams had. We saw so many sticks and just the attention to detail, which is what we expect, again, at this point in the season. Absolutely. So NC State the third time at 197 plus this season. Penn State their second highest of the season by barely by 0.025. And the University of Pennsylvania, a new season high for them. So we're going to take a quick break. We've got a senior day ceremony and the award ceremony after this. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
So it is a Wolfpack win on Senior Day with a 197-375 out of the NC State Gymnastics team. Number 23, Penn State, just narrowly behind them with a 197, just a quarter tenth off of their season high as well. And Penn putting up a season high 196.05. So a fantastic final quad meet for many of these teams as they get set for the postseason. Again, with it being Senior Day, we've got a fantastic senior award ceremony coming up, followed by the awards. So we've got a lot going on, honoring seniors from all of the teams. All right, so for Rachel Garland and Sydney Sneed, we're gonna take a back seat, but please do enjoy this award ceremony and have a great rest of your day. Today, we honor four women, Brooke, Madison, Lex, and Emily, who have meant so much to NC State Gymnastics over the last five years. They will be remembered by their teammates and coaches for their perseverance through their journeys. This perseverance and grit drove each of them to pursue excellence every step along the way. From the spring of 2020, when season came to a sudden stop, to 2021, when we managed to excel and defy all odds, not only through COVID, but by competing three straight days at NCAA championships. Until now, when we became the first ever regular season ACC champions. These four never gave up and were always hungry for more.
seasons. Beginning in, in, in 2023, Brooke has now served as gymnastics program as a student coach for two years. Always willing to help and go the extra mile, Brooke has been an integral part of the NC State gymnastics program, serving in multiple roles. A native of Wheaton, Illinois, Brooke will be graduating with a bachelor's of science in human biology, a program she has excelled in and received two scholastic team selections when she was a student athlete. For plans to stay in Raleigh to continue working with her church's college ministry upon graduation. Today, Brooke is escorted by her parents, Keith and Kristen, her brother Ethan, and her sister-in-law, Maddie. Brooke, thank you for everything. You have been the epitome of taking advantage and enjoying opportunity. After the decision was made to retire from the sport of gymnastics, you embraced your new role with gratitude and initiative. It takes a village to achieve success, and you were a big part of that village day in and day out. Your willingness to do the little bit of extra was noticeable daily. Described by your teammates and coaches as hardworking, compassionate and supportive. You will be remembered for your 100% dedication to Wolfpack Gymnastics. Whether you were training, coaching, giving a pep talk, or moving a mat, Brooke, you were always giving your all for the team. You have taught others to believe in themselves and to trust the process. As one of your teammates said, everyone needs a Brooke in their lives. Although you will be missed next year, we are excited for you to stay in Raleigh as you continue working for your church's college ministry. PAC Gymnastics appreciates all you have done over the past four years and is excited to follow your next journey. Madison, it is crazy to think how time has flown by as I remember having dinner with you and your mom after practice when I visited Texas back in the fall of 2019. We talked about how exciting becoming part of the pack was going to be and our college was right around the corner. Now, four and a half years later, we are celebrating you and your journey. Mighty Mads, quiet at times, but always mighty. You are described by your teammates and coaches as strong, inspirational, and uplifting. You have a big heart and a contagious smile that lights up a room. You have impacted all of us by your daily determination to chase your goals. From your freshman year, when your love for competing shone through, as you did a quick stretch and modified floor warm up so you could perform with excellence at NCAAs in Georgia, to last Saturday when you fired up the crowd with your return to floor. Your personality is contagious. Your impact has gone far beyond your performances on the competition floor. The lessons you have taught others have spread wide. You are proof that no setback is too big to overcome, and a great attitude helps one find 
the good in every circumstance, especially while pushing through the tough times. Maddie, as you move on to continue your studies to chase your next dream of becoming a news anchor, I am excited to cheer you on from afar. is currently working towards a graduate certificate in professional communication and managerial skills. She's been a major contributor in her time at NC State, both inside and outside of competition, collecting four all-conference honors, three conference all-tournament awards, while maintaining a status as a three-time all-conference scholastic selection. Alexis has totaled a pair of Conference Specialists of the Week awards in her time at NC State. Coming into this afternoon's meet with 27 podium finishes and 12 individual titles. Ortega's career was highlighted by winning the Conference All-Around Championship in 2023. Topping the leaderboard with a four event score of 39.25 at the 2023 Eagle Championships. This season, Lexus fired a pair of new career highs with a 9.925 on beam against North Carolina and a 9.95 on the bars at Temple with Maryland and Penn to earn a pair of event crowns, building towards seven total podium finishes entering in today's meet. Today, Alexis is being escorted by her parents, Lisa and Eddie, and her brothers, Nick and Matthew. Lex, so many memories. But when thinking of your career as a Wolfpack gymnast, one word comes to mind, limitless. You will forever be remembered by me as Limitless Lex. Your comeback, your perseverance, your grit, and now, more than anything, your love for what you do. You are resilient, influential, and motivating. You have been an example of patience in the plan. From deciding to focus on two events, to then being excited and confident you were ready to train three events, to becoming the 2023 Conference All-Around Champion. What a story. I am so proud of all you have accomplished and overcome. You will be remembered to all to never settle and always drive for more as a student, athlete, and human. You have taught your teammates that if you believe you can, you can. And no matter what you go through, you can always come out the other side stronger than you ever thought possible. Lex wants to express her appreciation, love, and gratitude to her teammates, coaches, and support staff. All of you have helped her grow into the person she has become today. Lex, it has been a privilege to watch you grow into that person. Thank you for allowing us all to be part of your journey. It has been truly special. Alexis, thank you for everything you've done as a competitor and person in your time here at NC State to help build our gymnastics program.
Today's final honoree is Emily Shepard. Emily will leave with a legacy at NC State as one of the most successful gymnasts in program history, rewriting record books over the course of her five-year career. Emily is a 15-time All-Conference honoree, an 11-time Conference All-Tournament finisher, and a three-time All-Conference Scholastic Team selection. After winning the beam and all-around crown in 2022 Eagle Championships, Emily became the first gymnast in program history to win Conference Gymnast of the Year twice in a career, claiming the 2021 and 23 Eagle Gymnast of the Year award. Emily enters today's squad having won six straight ACC Gymnast of the Week honors, pushing her career total to 15 different weekly awards. Emily's outstanding career included a breakout 2021 campaign in which she was named both Eagle Gymnast of the Year for the first time and WCGA Region 5 Gymnast of the Year. Even before today's action, Emily holds program records for the most scores of 9.9 or higher in program history with 51, the most 9.9 or higher scores on bars with 14, the most scores of 9.9 or higher on B with 13, the most scores of 9.9 or higher on four with 21, and she's tied for the most in program 9.9 or higher on ball with eight. Emily has fired a program that has 37 scores of 39 or higher, all of them scores over her five years of competition. And earlier this season, became the first gymnast in NC State history to record a 9.9 or higher in all four events during the same meet, back on February 17th against Clemson. That same day, Emily's all-around effort scored a 39.75 and set a new program record for the best all-around score in program history, which also marks the highest ever recorded by a gymnast from an ACC school. A great representation of both NC State University and our gymnastics program. Emily will be graduating in May with a Bachelor's of Arts in Biological Sciences along with a minor in Sports Science. Emily dreams of working in sports upon the completion of her undergraduate studies here at NC State. Today, she's escorted by her parents, Corey and Philip. Her grandparents, Mary, Ron, Juanita, and Wayne, and her club coaches, Holly and Katya. Emily, it was April of 2018 when I got the text from Phil. He knew he had found a prospect that would hopefully become part of our PAC family. You came to campus and we all knew that it just felt right. Five years later, and you have achieved your goal of helping to take Wolfpack Gymnastics to new heights. From your electric smile, to your willingness to take a picture with the little girl that you once were, you are a role model, determined, passionate, and inspiring. That is you. You will be remembered by your teammates for your love for the sport, constantly striving for more inside and outside the gym. You embraced your leadership role, welcomed the freshmen with open arms, and taught others that the journey is not always going to be smooth, but if you put in the work, you can achieve all of your goals. Although your name will be in the record book for years to come, it is the person behind the name that I hope others will learn from. Truly appreciative for the opportunity, you have embraced every challenge as an opportunity to grow even more as a person. Emily, chase your next dream of pursuing a career in the sports industry, the same as you chase this dream, as the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams.
Ladies and gentlemen. Brooke, Madison, Lex, and Emily. The four of you have shared two special memories in your career. NCAAs in 2021. What an exhilarating weekend and one that will be treasured for years to come. And then February 17th, 2024, when together we became ACC regular season champions and lit the bell tower red. What an iconic night. As you graduate from NC State, these memories will only be part of your story. I am confident all four of you will continue your story and flourish as you chase your next dream. They always say your college years go by so fast. I hope you look back on your storied careers and you can cherish your experiences and allow them to lead you into your next journey. Each of you, in your own way, has left your mark on Wolfpack Gymnastics. Thank you on behalf of everyone at NC State. Bob, Phil, Emily, and I are excited for your next chapter, but are so thankful to have been part of this chapter. Always remember, for the strength of the pack is the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is the pack. All of our incredible seniors, and thank them once more for their contributions to this team as we wish them luck in their future endeavors. And now fans, it's time for...